We start with the very first spoken words of this series. Our good old friend, the wavetable oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character. Now in the next two episodes, let's go for a little experiment. We're going to look at simple analysis resynthesis technique known as sinusoidal modeling and how we can apply it artistically. For that, we're going to take the freak peak external from Emmanuel Jordan's CSA descriptor package, which is a great library, by the way, and for me, it worked a little better than Sigmund and all the other alternatives. What it does is compute trajectories of partials in a spectrum and try to track them over time. The arguments 2048.4 are simply passed on to the FFT implementation inside and is of course arbitrary, but a good starting point for a working pitch detection. So what do we obtain from it? A list, obviously, one of interleaved frequency and amplitude values to be precise. Our good old friend, the wavetable oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at arbitrary speed. We can also pass it some attributes, such as the amplitude threshold below which partials are going to be ignored, and the amount of peaks we would like to be returned. We're going to have to do a little bit list processing here, so let's first deinterlace those values with CL delays, so we get one list of frequencies and another one of amplitudes. Our good old friend, the wavetable oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at arbitrary speed and enjoy nice additional features, such as interpolation. Okay, to record the partials in a jitter matrix, let's first save this patch to a temp folder and make another one to be used inside of a poly object. Instead of letting this degenerate into a copy and paste orgy, we'd like to have everything nice and tidy in one place. Inside of the poly patcher, we'd like to get hold of the voice we're currently observing, and we get that from the first outlet of a this poly object, starting at 1, which is why we immediately subtract 1 to make it 0 based. Let's make two inlets for the frequencies and amplitudes list respectively. With CL nth, we are able to retrieve the nth value from a list starting at 1. Here we can use the voice number directly. We instantiate two JIT poke objects for the values respectively and fetch our frame count from outside what's hiding in the p start stop count sub patch this goes into the second inlet as it denotes the x equals time dimension of the matrix into the first inlets we feed the values for frequency and amplitude and the last inlet is specified by the voice number this time starting at 0 as it is the y dimension of the matrix Let's also make two number boxes so we can observe what is going on later. We instantiate the poly with 20 voices and a target zero attribute, which is important because it allows the lists to be delivered to all voices simultaneously. We open the 10th voice arbitrarily and see that everything seems to work fine. Our good old friend, the wavetable oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character. Now let's make those matrices finally. The first is called frequencies and consists of one plane of float 32 values with a maximum length of 1000 FFT frames and 20 possible trajectories. We transform the output a little so we get a nice display in a GTP window. Our good old friend, 
the wavetable oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at arbitrary speed and enjoy nice additional features, such as interpolation, provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave. We basically copy and paste everything for our amplitudes values, just adapt the display transformations again. Interestingly, I had to reinitialize the send FC rec object here to get it to transmit the data into our poly. Only David Sicarelli knows why. Play them at mm. arbitrary speed and enjoy nice additional features, such as interpolation, provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave. Our good old friend, the Wavetable Oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at arbitrary speed and enjoy nice additional features, such as interpolation, provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave. The last thing we want to do is save frequency and amplitude matrix data using write, so we can resynthesize them in the next episode.